All right, so welcome to Unit 6 where we're going to be talking about sampling distributions. Okay, um, notice how I sort of have this part highlighted. Um, we talked about distributions of a sample and distributions of populations in previous units. But this unit, we're going to specifically talk about a sampling distribution. And hopefully by the end of it, you'll have a really good understanding of the difference between them. Uh, mainly because this is the type of distribution that most um, experimental scientists, researchers use in order to come up with um, predictions and to do inference testing and stuff like that. So this section is really, really important. Uh, this whole unit is really important in understanding what exactly a sampling distribution is, uh, the characteristics of a sampling distribution, and um, everything that goes along with it that we'll be using later on for inference. Okay, so um, in this section we're going to look at the different between a parameter and statistic. Hopefully that sticks out to you and you remember the difference. Um, we're going to use a sampling distribution of a statistic, so you'll learn what a sampling distribution. Hopefully you'll know that statistic is for a sample, not a population, and evaluate a claim against a parameter. So we're evaluating, this is sort of like testing somebody's claim about against what we believe is like the true population mean, true population proportion. We're going to distinguish among these um, couple of uh, different definitions. You really have to understand them. Distribution of a population, distribution of a sample, and sampling distribution of a statistic. Okay, so those are going to be three completely different distributions. Determine whether or not a statistic is an unbiased estimator. So remember that unbiased estimator, um, we've gone over what unbiased means. It means it's consistently high or consistently too low. We want it to be about the same as the population mean and describe the relationship between the sample size and the variability of a statistic. So um, the variability is talking about um, how far really it is away from the population mean or um, proportion. Okay, so this is really important. I would highly suggest that you take a look at this YouTube video. It's literally the best video I think you can watch to make sure that you understand um, what exactly a sampling distribution is. It's a really funny video. It only takes like 10 minutes, but I think if you watch it, you're going to be like, whoa, okay, I get this sampling distribution thing. So please take a minute, watch the video. Um, so that you really have a good understanding of what a sampling distribution is. And then as I go through this PowerPoint, you're going to be like, okay, so here's the nitty gritty of um, a sampling distribution. All right, so just a quick introduction. So when we talk about statistical inference, what that means is we are taking a sample and from that sample we're drawing conclusions about the larger population. Now keep in mind that you can take different random samples and they're going to yield different statistics. So if I was going to take a look at the average amount of time that students spend on social media, if I took a sample from Fairfax County and then I took a sample from Orange County, California, and then I took a sample from New York City, those are all different samples and they're all going to yield different statistics. But even if I took the whole United States and I took a sample of 100 students five different times, um, about the amount of time that they spend on um, social media, I'm still going to come up with five different average amounts of time that the students spend on social media. They may all be similar, but since it's a different random samples, I'm going to end up coming up with different um, average amounts of time that they send on social media. So in order to be able to describe the sampling distribution of a possible statistic, um, we're going to have to do that in order to perform statistical inference. So a sampling distribution just takes a bunch of random samples and puts them in a distribution. We'll be going over that more later on, just a general introduction to it. We can think of a statistic as a random variable because it takes on numerical values that describe the outcome of the random sampling process. So we've taken a hundred different samples of 50 students and we want to know how much time they send on social media. So that, it, that statistic is a random variable because we're actually finding the average amount of time that they spend on social media. Okay, so um, basically what we do is we start out with a population, we gather a sample, and then we make an inference about the population. But instead of just gathering one sample, instead of saying, okay, let's take one sample of 50 students and see how much time they spend on social media and then make an inference about the population, we take like thousands of samples of 50 students 
look at all of those thousands of samples of 50 students and then make an inference about the population. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at with a sampling distribution. So as we begin to use sample data, so we take samples to make conclusions about a wider population, we have to be able, you have to be able to understand what you're looking at, whether it describes a sample or a population. So just remember that a parameter is a number that describes the population. A statistic is a number that describes something from a sample. So any numbers involved with the population is a parameter. Any numbers involved with a sample is a statistic. Okay, so just remember S and P. S comes from sample. P, parameters come from populations. Okay? Um, we and often we're going to we're going to go over what all of the symbols mean in just a second but we use the greek letter mu for the population mean so sort of also remember i remember that population is always sort of your greek letters and samples are kind of like your non greek letters i guess um, so we write the greek letter mu for the population mean Okay, that's a parameter, and X bar for the sample mean, that's a statistic. We use P to represent a population proportion, okay, so that would be a parameter, and the sample proportion P hat is a statistic, okay, so this might be a new term here, P hat, P with a hat on top, means that that is a proportion from a sample. Regular, just a little old P, is a proportion from the entire population. Just like we use a sample mean, Mean to estimate a population mean, we use a sample proportion to estimate a population proportion. Okay, so just some symbols, um, just a quick review. So parameter is the population for means is mu and sigma. That means population mean, population standard deviation. If I'm taking a sample, sample mean is x bar, sample standard de deviation is s with a little x underneath. With proportions, population proportion is p. Um, sigma with a P underneath means um, standard deviation of the proportion. Now, I would highly suggest um, whenever you just have sigma, that's usually understood that that's the mean, um, that we're talking about means. So if you're talking about the standard deviation of a proportion, write that little P underneath so that we know we took a proportion and it's not just taking a look at um, it's not just taking a look at the means. Now, notice the statistic symbols from a sample for proportions is p hat. So p hat means that's a proportion from a sample. So what proportion of students own colorful iPhones? Now, notice we still have this Greek symbol standard deviation, but we have the p hat underneath. So this tells us this is a standard deviation of p hat. But so that p hat tells us that it's from a sample. So it's really important that you put those p's and those p hats to say, this is the population, this is the sample. Okay, so just make sure you understand the distinction between statistics and parameters. If you use the incorrect symbol on the AP exam, you will lose points. So it's better to really drill it into your head now, then you'll be good to go later on. So when you're making conclusions, and we're going to get to that later on, we're go you're going to have to make sure you use language such as talking about the true mean or population mean. So that would mean this portion right here, true proportion, population proportion, that's talking about your parameters, okay, if you just use the word mean, we don't know if you're talking about a sample or a proportion. So get used to the symbols, knowing when to use them correctly, and get used to the language. This is true mean, sample mean. True pop, true proportion, sample proportion. So get used to the language and the symbols, and that will just help a lot later on. Okay, so let's just take a look at some distinctions between a statistic and a, and a parameter. Statistic comes from a sample, parameter is from a population. Let's suppose that I so ran, randomly select 100 seniors in Fairfax County and record everybody's GPA. Okay, so here's 100 seniors, here's all their GPAs. Okay, now the 100 seniors are one possible sample, only one. I could come up with like three of those tables, that would be three different groups of 100, that would be three different samples. All of the seniors in Fairfax County make up the entire population. Now, remember, you want to use the correct symbol for statistics as a sample, parameter versus population. So when I say the sample mean X bar is 2.5470, X bar, that means I know I'm talking about a sample, and the sample standard deviation is 0 0.7150. Notice the symbol, okay, to know that we're talking about a sample. Now, the population mean, notice the symbol mu of X, and the population standard deviation, S of X, are unknown, okay, so, or sorry, not S of X, sigma of x. Okay, notice that I'm using the Greek symbols. We don't know what they are. 
Okay, now, what we, why do we take a sample and why do we need the sample standard deviation? We use the sample x bar to estimate the population mean mu of x. We also use the sample standard deviation to estimate the population standard deviations. We haven't decided whether or not they're reliable and useful whatsoever, but just we just use them to potentially give an estimate of what the population could be. Okay, now we know that a number that describes the population is a parameter, okay, so that means mu of x and sigma of x, they're both parameters. A parameter for a proportion is represented by just the letter P. So when you see the letter P, that means a population proportion, everybody. A number that is computed from a sample is a statistic, so we said x bar and s of x are both statistics because they're from a sample. A Statistic, sorry, a statistic for a sample for proportions is p hat. So with a little hat on top, okay, that's really important to make sure you include that. That tells us that we got a proportion from a sample and not an entire population. So if we had gone through and chosen a hundred different seniors, okay, you would have a different sample. So that means your x bar and your s of x would still change because it's a hundred different seniors, which means not their GPAs aren't going to be the same as the hundred that I chose but they're still a representation of the same population, okay? Just keep in mind that a different sample, even though it's from the same larger population, is going to produce different means and different standard deviations than um, if you did the entire population because you're taking different samples, so different GPAs. They might be similar, but they're still going to be different. Okay, so um, let's just take a little bit of practice. Um, in the following examples, I want you to identify the population, the parameter, the sample, and the statistic in each of the following examples. So a pediatrician wants to know the 75th percentile, remember percentile is that amount and below, for the distribution of heights of 10-year-old boys, so she takes a sample of 50 patients, calculates the 75th percentile is 56 inches. Okay, Pew Research Poll Center, hopefully some of you guys have heard of that, asked 1,102 12 to 17 year olds in the United States if they have a cell phone. Of the respondents, 71% said yes. Wow, 12 year olds having cell phones, that's crazy. Okay, so let's see, how'd you guys do? So population was all 10 year old boys. Parameter of interest, so what are we looking at? We're looking for the 75th percentile for all 10-year-old boys. So parameter means what population are we looking at? Um, the sample is the 50 10-year-old boys that we found. The statistic was the 56 inches because that came from the sample. And the 75th percentile of the heights in the sample. So, um, so the sample was 50 and the statistic was an average of 56 inches. In the second one, we're talking about proportions, okay, the population is all 12 to 17 year olds in the United States. The parameter is P, so we're looking what, when we're defining the parameter, we're basically like saying what proportion are we looking for? We're looking for the proportion of 12 to 17 year olds with cell phones. The sample is 1,102 12 to 17 year olds in the sample. The statistic is P hat is 0.71, so that's 71% is from the sample. Okay, now, ooh, let's talk about sampling variability. I'm going to keep with that ing. You're going to hear that, probably get annoyed by it, but whatever. Okay, so how can, how can the um, sample mean be an accurate estimation of the population mean? After all, if I take different samples, I'm going to get different values of x bar. So that's called sampling variability. So sampling variability just means that when I take different samples, I'm going to get different means. Okay, so if I take different samples of different... Um, um, students for GPAs, I'm going to get different mean GPAs for the different samples that I take. So sampling variability just tells us that the value of a statistic, so the sample mean, is going to change when I take different samples. Now, to make sense of sampling variability, we say, basically we ask the question, what would happen if we took many, many, many samples? Let's say I took a thousand samples of a hundred students in Fairfax County. What does that mean? So here's my population, and I've taken 100 students, 100 students, 100 students, 100 students, 100 students, 100 students, 100 students da, 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 da. and the every mean for each of these 100 students is actually going to be di different. But how is that going to relate to the population? Okay? All right, we're going to come back to this actually in the next um, slide, next video.